let's just call them wood turning purists out there that believe that you only turn the most pristine wood that you can find. Well, I consider myself frugal, some would say cheap, whatever, I don't care. I use scraps or wormy wood or whatever I can find, whatever I can find that's inexpensive. Uh, so, I've taken some scraps and I've started on a segmented Grecian style urn shaped vase. It's going to be nine and a half, ten inches wide at the feature ring and probably ten, ten inches tall. I don't know, we'll see. So, here's what we've got to start with. Let me zoom in for you, show you the base ring. But this is the this is the base ring in here. This is my glue block. Uh, yes, my glue block is composed of a bunch of glued up pieces. Actually, reclaimed fence board to be exact. I cut one side smooth. Made sure it was joinable, had a joinable face. <clears throat> glued two pieces together, glued another two pieces together, and another two pieces together, and then sandwiched them 90 degrees out. So it's all face grain to face grain. Yes, the wood's a little soft, but this is a waste block. It doesn't have to be made of expensive maple or walnut or cherry or whatever you have and I've used oak for face plates a lot because there's a lot of live oak and stuff around here the problem is oak is just so hard and I like to use it for other things now if I'm making uh, an actual face plate with my beetle tap then I'll use oak because I need that hard reliability in this case, this eventually will be wasted away. What better use is there for recycled fence board? Okay, I'm waffling. Sorry, Martin. But the segmented ring, the first segmented ring, and most of the, the rings of this are made up of segmented they're all segmented, but they're, it's mostly spalted maple from a tree I cut up in my yard in Ohio when I lived up there. And yes, it made the trip with me down to Texas. So I've tried to salvage as much of it as I can. It's very spalted. Some of it's very punky. Some of it's wormy. But I've cut it into small boards and cut those into segments. And that that most people would consider trash and put in the burn pit already, I'm trying to find a use for it. So this is the beginning. It's gonna have a semi-false bottom. I say semi-false because it's gonna be a segmented ring of mesquite that's actually inlaid in, but I'll show you that as we go along. I'll be back as soon as this dries and I glue another piece on. the 
very center ring is actually OSB. <clears throat> OSB that was, let me see if I can get you in closer to see that. OSB that was cut off of some beams in the house that I had built here in San Antonio in 1997. <clears throat> I kept it. I'm a woods grounder. I can't help it. In between the OSB <clears throat> are pieces of mesquite. On top of that are two veneers that I dyed black <clears throat> or attempted to dye black. We'll see how well that turns out. As you can see here, there's, well, I don't know if you can see that or not, but the black, there's black on the upper surface and the lower surface, but it gets a little light in the middle. <clears throat> but it still may have a cool effect. On top of that is a ring of hickory and mesquite, and below it, same thing, hickory and mesquite. And then plain veneer on top of that, and then the walnut and maple center. So this is my feature ring. <clears throat> you may notice that aren't perfectly lined up. There's a little bit of a canter to the angle or the, the direction of the ring. <coughs> Was that on purpose or did that initially turn out to be an accident that I made to look on purpose? Well, you'll just have to decide that for yourself. It's my shop and I'll never tell. Here's another ring. I said this vaulted maple was wormy and junky. This really doesn't have any punk in it. The punky part's gone. Well, that's maybe a little punky there. <clears throat> yes, I may have to do some filling with epoxy and whatever I choose to use. In this case, probably fine, fine sawdust. I like mixing fine sawdust with epoxy and using it as a filler. Uh, sometimes it can be relatively invisible. Sometimes it just <coughs> proves to be a, a highlight. And yeah, I'm, you know, there's in this wood, there's a lot of curl and stuff that we're going to lose. But, you know, that happens. It's not good for much else. <coughs> and you'll notice, yep, it's a little jagged. It's not perfect. It's a perfect ring. here you'll see the makings of two more rings one I've already got laid out in a circle getting ready to glue up <clears throat> so stay with me and uh, if you want to see how this turns out I'll be back Got a ways to go yet. I'm, uh, one of the things that's taking so long here is I'm using a bunch of scrap that I'm trying to get used up. Some spalted maple and spalted hickory that both, as you can tell, are wormy. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to fill those voids later or exactly what I'm going to do with them. But I'm leaning toward once I get the bottom half of this done, <clears throat> taking a Dremel tool and cutting out all the insect debris and filling this with colored epoxy. Again, this is going to take a while, but I'm in no hurry. <clears throat> There's a lot to be said for using pristine wood, but I'm not one of those I just can't afford it, you know? And I'm getting ready to retire at the end of next month. And I just can't afford all that high priced exotic flatwood to, to do my segmenting with. There may come a time when I can, but right now I pretty much use what I have. What I have is free. It's 
stuff I ate or cut myself or well it's all stuff I cut myself some of it was from some maple trees in my yard when I was in Ohio uh, and that's what this is uh, the hickory in here came from a friend she told me I could have all the hickory and oak I wanted so trying to get some of this used up this tree was infested with carpenter ants when I cut it down the hickory bowl. I made this, I took a piece of <clears throat> laminate covered plywood from an old cabinet door when I remodeled my house up in Ohio <clears throat> and I cut it round, cut a center point in it, cut grooves in it about every half inch and then I take my segmented ring and I hot glue it in four places once I get it centered. <clears throat> when I'm ready to glue it up, I put it in my tail stop, run my glue bead, slide it up and clamp it. I don't have to have a special, because I don't have room, quite frankly, for a special jig with a bench made clamp to clamp all these rings together. So this is the way I do it. it up and it'll be dry enough in about a half hour to pull this back and put my next ring on. And here's the finished vase. Like I said earlier, it's not perfect, but I didn't really intend for it to be. It's 14, 14 and a half inches tall, about nine and a half inches wide at the widest part. Mesquite ring on top floating mesquite ring bottom in the middle. The feature ring 
720 pieces. This is my biggest piece to date. And I like it. 